Alan Grayson of Florida. As briefly as possible, Mr. Secretary, I want to ask you a few questions about the visa waiver program. Are you familiar in general with the program? Uh, I'm in general, yeah, that's a pretty good way to describe it. <laughs> well, formerly the administration had the authority to add countries to the visa waiver program, and now it does not. Would you like to see that authority on behalf of the administration restored? Which authority? The authority to add countries to the visa waiver program, which allows uh, qualifying citizens of those countries to come to the United States sure. no, on a short-term basis without a visa. I think people qualify. Look, we have a standard, as you know, uh, that people are supposed to meet in order to be able to uh, qualify for it. And sure, uh, I, look, you're not going to have every country in the world being visa waivered for obvious reasons. But where people can meet the standards of requirement with respect to the rate of refusal, which is a, the key standard, uh, uh, we're all for it. Would you like to see strong strategic allies like Israel and Brazil and Poland rewarded for their cooperation with U.S. foreign policy by including them in the visa waiver program? Yeah, but I'm not in favor of waiving standards to do it. I think we have to have people meet the standard and, and proceed from there. Well, up to now, the standard has been what you described, which is a 3% rejection rate as determined by the Customs and Immigration Service. Right. Some countries go slightly beyond that, in part because there isn't a uniform standard applied by embassies throughout the country, throughout the world. Uh, so, some embassies have a more liberal policy with regard to applications than others do. With that in mind, instead of outsourcing the decision making to the Customs and Immigration Service, would you like to see input with regard to diplomatic and security and also economic considerations when these determinations are made? I'd have to review that. Let me just tell you that there are there are several established criteria in the act with respect to the current standard for the visa, visa waiver. One is that the government provides reciprocal uh, visa waivers. Two, that the government issues secure uh, machine readable passports. Three, that the government certifies they have a program to incorporate biometric identification into their passports. Four, that the government reports the thefts of blank passports. Five, that they maintain the low immigrant refusal rate. And six, that they maintain less than 2% rejection for travel for non-immigrant applicants. So those are the standards in the current law. And you guys obviously have the right to change that uh, if you see fit. But that's the current standard, and I'm not in favor of waiving that. Well, none of those standards are economic. For instance, none of them consider the economic benefit of the United States. None of those standards are security related, for instance, concerning the benefit to loyal Will allies. you give us a lot more analysts in the budget so we can do all of that? Would you be in favor of considering those factors as well, Mr. Secretary? I want to have some evaluation of it to me to make a judgment as to whether or not it makes sense. And one last question. Um, this is a sort of a mixture of State Department and the Department of Homeland Security, but recently the Global Entry Program was uh, uh, offered to Saudi Arabia. Uh, Saudi Arabia is where 15 of the 19 hijackers came out of. I can't think of any greater threat to aviation security than the Saudi Peninsula with Yemen uh, right uh, south of, of Saudi Arabia. Um, for the life of me, I don't understand why. Uh, uh, Saudi was given preferential treatment over our NATO allies uh, who fought alongside uh, with our soldiers and fought and died and were wounded in Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, and, and instead of rewarding NATO, our NATO allies, with this global entry, we're rewarding Saudi Arabia. I personally, I'm not trying to be political here, I think it's a, a dangerous policy and it could result in... in in, in American lives being killed. I'm just trying to determine, and I apologize, um, but I'm trying to determine who actually makes the final decision on that. Uh, and I'm told it's an interagency process. Um, which is, uh, you know, doesn't satisfy me and it won't satisfy you. I need to find out where that final decision gets made. But, but, and I want to say this in fairness, uh, Saudi Arabia uh, has cooperated with us and is cooperating with us in extraordinary ways. There are plots.
plots that we have uncovered that have never come to light and won't and shouldn't because of Saudi Arabia's assistance. Uh, Saudi Arabia is providing uh, invaluable uh, assistance in the counterterrorism efforts in the Arabian Peninsula. And Saudi Arabia has a, 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 an extremely effective and has entered into with us a major capacity to vet, to determine the security. And as you know, in the global entry program, you go through a, a, a huge background analysis and check. Plus, you have major uh, uh, biometrics that are a component of it. I, I, I went through this a year ago or so so that I could, you know, join it. And I remember, you know, every fingerprint, every sort of aspect of you is proctologized. And so you wind up with a pretty good sense of who's who. So I, I, I personally have confidence in the capacity of Saudi Arabia to do that. And I think uh, I wouldn't prejudice them automatically by virtue of what happened. I'd look at the procedure and check and see what goes into it in fairness. Yeah, I agree. And my time's expired, but I will say, and the Saudis have been extraordinary allies with respect to intelligence. I agree with you on that point. But I, I do think you, it, it merits review by your uh, department as well. Well, I'll check out on the final review, but I'm, uh, I, I have great confidence in the Saudi Arabian uh, contribution. The kingdom has been very, very helpful in any number of ways. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. I, I ask you just to remember what goes around comes around. <laughs>